So before this video starts, I'm gonna be getting a little shout out to Pepina. Two, drum, two, drum roll, please. Okay, it may be ridiculous, but still. <laughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> so yeah, basically, special shout out to Pepino Ramen. Basically, you're almost getting there to 100 subs, so yeah. If you're watching this, I'll be doing a fan art of me and Pepino celebrating you for getting 100 subs. So yeah. Love your love the mod, love your art, and yeah, let's get right into the video. So today I'm gonna to be reacting to the cut of the cut content of Pizza Tower, Part One. So let's get started. In three, two, one. Pizza Tower has quite a lot of fun new content. Either left in the files of the retail build or showcased in the many demo builds. Yep. Now I'm not gonna cover everything that was cut in this video, just the most interesting pieces. Okay. Let's talk about one I'm sure you're aware of. The scrap co-op mode. Duh. In this early demo build, one player would control Peppino and the other would control the noise. And this is pretty great. It's the kind of co-op that's also semi-competitive where you can throw each other around and compete for the highest. <laughs> I like how the noise just bing bong, bing bong all over there. Which is actually pretty neat. It seems like there was a lot of work done on this mode, with a whole unique set of animations and all the oh, other little details. Dang. <laughs> on one hand, it is a shame this was cut, but it seems the game's fast-paced nature didn't exactly lend itself well to multiplayer in this way, which is probably why it ended up being ultimately scrapped. Aw oh, man, it will be so cool to have like a player... The vigilante was also intended to be playable, and he huh. has quite a unique moveset. He can shoot, throw dynamite, and do a kind of explosive double jump. Oh, that's and so sick. ...was playable at one point, but according to the cutting room floor, he's in quite the broken state, meaning he was cut fairly quickly. Oh. Now, there's no evidence of this, but if we could see a return of these characters in a playable form in some sort of DLC akin to the alternate Shovel Knight campaigns, that would be really... Which cool. we're actually having to the noise. Alright, let's talk about this guy. Don't recognize him? Snick. That's an iconic video game mascot, Snick the Porcupine. This little fella... <laughs> <which made him laughs> Pepino. ...in which Pepino gets ready to attend the Sonic Amateur Games Expo but gets lost on the way, ending up at the Snick Amateur Games Expo instead. This all comes from the demo's manual, by the way, which is pretty great. There's a lot of neat stuff in here. Little pictures of each of the enemies and transformations <laughs> featured and... <laughs> So in the demo, there are a total of three I stages. I just saw, like, the bomb just like, he was inside, one inside one it. The bomb, the whole bomb was inside his mouth, that's funny. <laughs> this is a timed gauntlet of all three levels back to back, <laughs> with Snick.exe here chasing you around. And what do you get for completing this challenge? Well, you get to play as Snick himself. That's right, even this dude was playable at one point. And he's really cool, too. Just his normal walk almost instantly gives you top speed, with the dash move functioning as a Sonic CD-style super peel out. Woohoo! Super sneak when doing a super jump. Now I don't have to tell you why it's an absolute travesty that this little guy was cut, but he's not completely missing from the final game. He makes a cameo in one of Gustavo's taunts. He's on this missing poster on floor four, and he's in this secret room on floor five. And didn't even get to see it. You dumb notification. He makes a cameo in one of Gustavo's taunts. Yeah, I saw he's that on before. This missing poster on floor four. I saw that. And he's in this secret room on floor five. Oh, and it wait, what? It's obvious he was never actually intended for the final game. Wait. But more as a fun gag for the demo. So it's not a big deal, I guess. Oh. Alright, now to something slightly less tragic. Mm -hmm. Unused transformations and taunts. A few of the cut transformations include Buff Pepino, oh. Trump Pepino, Sick Pepino, okay. and Super Pepino. Nice. And for the taunts, there's this infamous Family Guy pose. Ah, <laughs> yes. Where Pepino strikes a sick SA1 pose. Hey. Fake Pepino still does this, which is pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Now, why these were cut, I couldn't tell you. Maybe they were simply just too epic. You know what else How is can epic? that be too this epic? Banging music. One oh, of my yeah. personal favorite tracks, Cold Spaghetti, originally sampled voice clips from Wario Land 4. Take a listen. Oh. I see that. Similarly, the... <laughs> sample from the track Pizza Time also took a clip from Wario Land 4 and was replaced with a sound alike in the final game. 
Now, yeah. this was probably done to avoid issues with Nintendo, which is understandable. I already knew that. I actually prefer the new version of Cold Spaghetti personally. One thing that went through quite a few changes is the end stage pillar. Very early on, it was actually just a phone you would pick up that would trigger the escape sequence. I guess someone's ordering a pizza? Now, when Pillar John was first implemented, he functioned quite differently. After collecting the five toppings throughout the oh, stage, Oh yeah, I remember, I was playing one of those demo builds where you had to feed him all the toppings. Activating the sequence. Let's wrap up by talking about a very different early final stage. And this is pretty interesting. The stage was originally much more difficult, and as you can see, it's mostly just collision, so I guess it was cut pretty quickly after they realized it wasn't all that fun. It sort of reminds me of those extra levels at the end of some Mario games, but I feel the final version of the stage does a better job capping off the game with a fast-paced dash to the end, rather than a slow, precise gauntlet. Link for a full playthrough of the stage in the description, along with all the other footage I used, and thanks to them for letting me use it as well. Alright. Should we watch part two? Yeah. Size of the doubt, there's a ton more stuff to cover when it comes to this game. My original video only really scratched the surface when it comes to scrapping and used ideas. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to give a huge thanks to Cactus Companion, one of the game's oh, nice. playtesters. He helped me a ton with this video. He provided me with a bunch of early footage and concept art and assisted mm -hmm. massively with research. Mm -hmm. Oh, and before you begin, full spoiler warning. Oh, okay. Spoilers. All right, first off, let's discuss the heat meter. The heat meter? This was an idea inspired by a similar mechanic from the game God Hand. The general concept was, the more enemies you'd kill in quick succession, the more this meter would fill up. And at certain levels of heat, enemy behavior would change accordingly, making oh. them both more aggressive and harder to hit. A few changed enemy behaviors include cheese slimes wielding baseball bats, mm -hmm. these pizza dudes shooting a revolver, okay. and these bananas becoming sentient, damaging you on contact. From the more monkeys? More points were given for defeating these souped up enemies, but in turn, more points were lost from taking damage. Now, Pepino himself would actually gain an extra attack option, being this sort of instant uppercut with where the enemy is sent depending on your directional input, oh. also functioning as a mid-air spike. Now the meter itself went through quite a few visual iterations, first being a sort of dial, then uh -huh. a kind of thought cloud, uh -huh. to lastly the meter as seen here. And this iteration uh -huh. of the meter stuck around for quite a while, before it was decided to scrap the mechanic entirely. Man. Now the reason behind its removal was apparently because it was difficult to design stages around it, and maybe because the community was kind of split on the idea anyway, but personally, <laughs> I just saw the Sonic Adventure the reference on one the same or something. Time is just kind of confusing. I do think the concept itself is interesting though. Okay, so there are a few things I didn't mention previously when it comes to the noise's playable form. Uh -huh. His moveset, as seen here, has him riding a skateboard, and he pretty much functions identically to Pepino here. Though later on, he gained a wholly unique set of moves, with stuff like this spin attack, okay. using a cape to glide midair, bouncing oh. on a pogo stick, double jumping and dashing forward with a jetpack, and riding a washing machine of all things. <laughs> it would also allow you to shoot a kind of rope, letting you grapple onto walls and grab enemies, which is pretty neat. Now, when the noise does eventually like return to play with form, hook. I hope it's with a moveset similar to this, rather than is frankly quite basic. Pretty sure it is. Hope oh so. yeah, and the washing machine actually does make an appearance in this Floor 5 secret room in the final game. Oh yeah. Wait. Snick's here too! And don't worry, he's not dead. He's just chilling wearing his ghost costume from this Halloween demo. Man. What an absolute legend. Yep. When it comes to Pepino's moveset, it changed quite a lot through the course of development. At one point, he had this kind of shoulder bash move you could use after grabbing an enemy. Oh, he also damn. had this breakdance attack that acted as a sort of low ground spin move. Now, the animations of this were actually reused as a taunt in the final game. Here's a really cool pizza cutter attack that acted as a sort of multi-hit move, even allowing you to do a kind of pogo bounce when aimed downward midair. Before he had his dash grab, he had this kind of pathetic looking slap attack. And this actually let you give these grabby hands here a high five, which is pretty funny. And at one point, <laughs> you could even double jump, as seen here. There was also a point where the wall climb had this weird property where it would carry your downward momentum, with you needing to scamper back up to regular speed slowly, which seems annoying. Before the bombs would pick up all the items, they acted as more of a transformation of sorts, being a kind of auto-run thing, with some sections even requiring you to platform in this state. Kind of like, wing transformation was also you know, like Firebutt Warrior or something, where you can't control him, but you have to jump. Before the Satan's Choice pizza slice gave Pepino a kind of screw attack jump, it actually functioned as more of an invincible speed boost power-up, as seen here. Oh my now, god! Now the ability changed quite a bit. As you can see, it controlled quite differently. You'd make uh -huh. use of these tombstones here to revive, with some puzzles requiring this. But what's really cool is you could possess enemies and control them directly, using them to Oh, that would be so sick! And I think this would have been well, really cool, in the final. but apparently the ability was excluded because it felt too slow to control. Now the yeah. revolver was actually originally able to shoot upwards and diagonally instead of just straight ahead. 
and the shotgun changed quite a few times. It was actually just a part of Pepino's regular moveset at one point, with okay. him just pulling it out at the end of a combo. I also had limited ammo too at some point, but now at another point, you could actually purchase them in these stores here, losing it after getting hit. Oh. Now the scrapped health system is pretty interesting, and I'm not talking about during boss fights here. I mean, in regular ass stages, you could straight up die after getting hit off. Oh. Now this went through a couple iterations. At first, it was this pizza meter in the top left, with picking up slices replenishing the HP. A later iteration on the idea had Pepino's health indicated by his walking animation, walking like this at full health, and like this at low health, with these spaghetti pickups found throughout the stage replenishing the HP, and I kind of love how he just gulps it down, plays it off. <laughs> yeah, he just, just gulps it down the whole thing. Like, like this. Oh. The spaghetti sprite was later reused as one Delicious. of the tower secret treasure collectibles in the final game, however. I think was in... Alright, so in the game, after beating the final stage, you're know. given a completion ranking called Pepino's Final Judgment. Mm -hmm. And depending on how much you've completed up to that point, you get a different end screen. And you can come back for a better ranking as many times as you want on the same save file. But, according to this very ominous scrapped end screen, the game was originally much more strict, telling you to start a whole new save file to try... Oh! Oh, that's terrifying. Mm -mm. For a better ranking. And while yes, this image is very funny, I can't think of no, it's not a terrifying. that makes you replay the whole thing just to try for a better completion percentage. So it's pretty clear why this was changed. Thank God. I know there's quite a bit when it comes to enemies and stage gimmicks. First off, when it comes to enemies, there were these guys, who used to be how you acquired the Winnie Mount early on. They'd mainly appear in the cut stage Dragon's Lair, which we'll touch on later. Okay. Here's an alternate version of the Pepino robot that shot cheese projectiles. These were in the game quite briefly, only ever found in one demo. And originally, it was possible to bounce off the top of cheese slimes, even being used in platform sections like this. Now, when it comes to stage gimmicks, here are a couple cut saw blade variants. There were these ones that'd move up and down, and these ones that'd move across the ground. There were also mm. these pizza box bear traps that you need to mash out of, which seems annoying. Now, at one point, there were these noise traps in some stages, such as this boulder being dropped by dynamite, oh. or the noise himself pushing a rock off a cliff. There were also these noise bombs that would follow behind Pepino when picked up, activating the escape sequence. Now, very early on, it was actually possible to go underwater, and there were even entire underwater sections with the signature clunky movement that usually accompanies it. And nobody likes these kinds of sections in games, let's be real. But hey, at least your little toppin' fellas would get snorkels when underwater, which is cute. Aww. Now, in this section known forest, Pepino's task was to deliver Gustavo's pizzas door to door. And failing to do so resulted in Gustavo beating the shit out of him. Oh, God. There's also this footage of Pepino delivering a pizza to an alien dude as well. And this alien guy does still make a cameo in the stage Deep Dish 9, so that's something. Okay, now here's something really interesting. At one point, it was considered for the jump scares in the stage Don't Make a Sound to be in full 3D. A playtest at the time, oh, that girl. goes by the name of Orca, Oh, I don't like that. ...actually made these for inclusion in the game. <laughs> Why the pineapple version or whatever? To leave them out, possibly for performance reasons. Kind of a shame. Shame. Alright, now let's get into scrap stages. And yeah, there's quite a lot here too. Kung Fu was a stage inspired by the Streets of Rage series. Kung Fu? There were even sections throughout the stage requiring you to defeat multiple waves of enemies in order to progress, just like a lot of beat-em-up games usually have. Now, the stage's music and general theme were given to Act 2 of the stage Pig City in the final Oh, game. so that was like, Space replace of... is a cool whatever. One. I really like the abstract visuals here. Pig City this one sort of reminds me of the stages Fast Food Saloon and Golf, with these timed button gates and the use of the ball transformation. So those stages are probably what became of this one. And there's even this poster that references it in Fast Food Saloon. Nice. Now, Dragon's Lair is really interesting. This was a stage that took place at the Floor 1 boss at the time, with the cheese dragon here being the boss himself. In the stage, these Super Sentai dudes named the Toppin Warriors. Damn. They're like Power the Rangers. System. Now, the stage took place entirely well, in pizza time, yeah. and with each minute that passed, Pizza Face would appear, with one of your buddies getting taken away when hit by him. Oh, that's now, annoying. Now, at some point in the stage, this dragon would block your way, with the player needing to toss a heavy object at him in order to clear the path forward. And after four hits, he'd be defeated, and you'd collect the key and finish the stage. Now, I think the general concept of a timed challenge was eventually given to the stage of war in the final game. And uh. the cheese dragon himself actually does make an appearance in this floor one secret room, along with the other uh. garbage from earlier. Here's some concept art for a planes stage, where the main gimmick was fire-based enemies and obstacles, with these tomato dudes lighting these haystacks on fire, like I seen here. 
At certain points, you'd use the night ability to bypass these fire hazards, and eventually, you'd make your way through a mansion section where you'd find a key, leading you to the escape sequence where everything is on fire before finishing the stage. Now, I, I think see. the general concept kind of the stage of the pit city being on fire farm, we have to with these start. tomato dudes also being present there. And the music was later slightly altered and reused for the Satan's Choice section of the ice stage in the final game. Here's a really interesting concept for a mansion stage, actually intended to be the fourth stage to floor five. So the stage would start in a rainy forest area before you'd make it to Pepperman's mansion, and when inside, you'd recruit these vegetable friends along the way, using them to complete various puzzles, all while fake Pepino chased you throughout the stage. Oh. And at some points, his hands and feet would bust through the ceiling and floor. Oh, that's quite terrifying. disgusting. And these animations can actually still be found in the game files. Oh. Now, an earlier version of the stage actually had a Pepperman chase sequence that took place in some sort of pepper dimension or something. Now, this idea later evolved into the fake Pepino chase sequence seen in the final game. Yeah. Anyway, it seems the end goal was to burn down the whole mansion and escape with fake Pepino still inside. Now, the reasoning behind its removal was just that it was simply too ambitious of a concept, which is a shame. It okay. does seem like a really cool idea. Now, the eggplant and potato fellas later returned as enemies in the stage fun farm, along with the tomato dudes mentioned previously. And obviously, Fake Buffino himself later returned as the boss of Floor 4. I see. Now, speaking of bosses, they're an aspect that changed a ton through the course of development. Mm -hmm. In the final game, the bosses are only able to be damaged after a certain attacks or at certain points of vulnerability. But originally, bosses could be damaged constantly, with no cooldown. Now, oh, apparently, it's changed so the way sick. we know really it, because the fights felt a bit too mindless, and that makes sense. Now, here's a weird one, the Scrapped B boss. Yeah, so at one point, this was the actual boss for Floor 4. The fight would begin with a completely empty what? room, and a suddenly bee? a bee just flies through a window and is revealed to be the boss. Now, as you can see, it's very unfinished, but the fight itself basically consisted of standing on this button that at the right time so in order to catch the bee in this cloud. Now, apparently this was at a point in development where the bosses were much simpler in design, and that seems pretty evident here. But apparently it was cut because it felt more like a stage gimmick than an actual boss. No. Now, in the final game, Mr. Stick is a character that doesn't do all that much, but at one point, it was actually intended for him to have his own boss fight. Excuse and this me? And also quite unfinished, but the fight itself basically consisted of him flying around and summoning each boss one by one. Now, not all of them need to be defeated, however. As soon as he himself is dealt enough damage, he'd die and the fight would end. Here's an early version of the noise fight that was much simpler compared to the final game. Oh, the little noises are attacks, kind of different. Bouncing around, attempting to press Pepino into a pizza and spawning these noisy enemies, which could then be thrown back, allowing you to damage him. Now this attack he does in the final game kind of resembles this early noise, but other than that, the final version of the fight obviously has a lot more to it. Also, in some other early versions of the fight, instead of blowing up to fake you out, he'd dab instead, as seen here. Very epic. <laughs> now eventually, after the current version of the fight was fully developed, there was still one aspect that changed. After the fight ended and the key was collected, yeah. the noise would actually come along from off screen and steal the key back from you. Oh! After arriving back at the hub, these reporter guys would lead you down each floor, eventually bring you to the noise himself, revealed to be hiding on floor one, where you'd steal the key right back. Now, apparently, this was removed because it was too confusing for playtesters. But that's Thank God they didn't put the LB straight up very mad after stealing the key. Where the stage Literally taking hours fighting it until I get that surprise. No, I'm not kidding. The stage would get a complete makeover, with all four really? knights being replaced with these noisy enemies, and uh -huh. the song, The Noises Jam-Packed Radical Anthem, playing instead of the regular music. Now, unfortunately, this idea was conceived far too close to the release deadline, so it couldn't make it for that reason. Man. But hey, at now, least we're going to get him in a DLC update. ...ideas that McPig was throwing around on the Pizza Tower Discord server back in 2020. And keep in mind, this just seems to be him spitballing here. But I still think it's worth discussing regardless. So back when the Cheese Dragon was still the Floor 1 boss, the idea was for the Floor 2 boss to be Mort in a UFO, making use of the Super Jump to damage him. Huh. An idea for the Floor 3 boss was a kind of arena, similar to the ones found in Kirby games. Huh. With opponents like a single Cheese Slime that dies in one hit, the noise in the Kung Fu getup, and even Gustavo. Here's an idea for Boss 4, being a mayor you'd have to win an election against. With Pepino needing to beat up the voters and throw them into his voting booth instead, which is obviously hilarious. But my favourite is this idea for a rhythm game style fight against fake Pepino, with the player needing to jump, grab and taunt in rhythm whilst avoiding projectiles, with the idea that it'd be a kind of reversal of expectations. Alright, uh, now here are some messages from back in 2018 that show that very early on, Pillar John was sort of the main antagonist of the story. Uh. He'd comment on your game and taunt Pepino throughout, and in the end, he'd reveal his true form, being the tower itself. 
then transforming into a Rudy the Clown type figure for the final boss fight. Huh. Rudy the Clown being this guy from Wireland 3, if you're not aware. Oh. Now at the time, you'd actually feed Pillar John at the end of every stage, so you'd actually be making him stronger throughout the game without knowing he's the true villain, which is an interesting concept. The idea of a clown as a final boss stuck around, however. Oh yeah, Pizza Head. Alright, so here's a really cool and crazy ambitious concept for the hub world. So, after the game's intro, you'd make your way to the tutorial, where you'd presumably super jump up from here, making it to the hub itself. After being the first stage, you'd actually have a conversation with Gustavo. And here's an example of some dialogue taken from a playtester feedback document. And I'm not going to read this all out loud, but feel free to pause and read this stuff. It's pretty good. I'm not going to pause and read it. There's different dialogue depending on what stages you'd beaten thus far. Real neat stuff. Now, it's not just Gustavo you'd be able to speak to. There were NPCs all over the hub that had dialogue. Such as this guy telling you to take his bike, or this wizard guy. And yeah, this is obviously placeholder dialogue. Now at some points, these bosses here would block your way, with the player needing to meet them at the Mr. Stick Arena in order to fight them and proceed forward. Uh. There were even some puzzle elements here too, like this UFO stage that only appeared after waiting in a specific spot for it to become night, something that this NPC here apparently clued you in on. There's also this cheese boat here you'd acquire at some point, which would allow you to sail to this island where Pepperman appears to be stranded. Okay. Now the temporary sprite of this boat is still in the files as seen here. Hmm. While this whole hub concept is really neat and all, I feel the simplicity of the final game's hub is preferable overall, at least to me personally. True. Some remnants of this old hub still make it to the final design however. The noise at cafe and laundry room are still present in this floor 4 secret room and this floor 5 secret room mentioned previously. Hmm. Alright, before we get into final boss stuff, I'll touch on sound effects real quick. Okay. Here are like Pepino voice lines. Where really? he has a much higher pitch tone of voice. Yahoo! Yay, yay, yay! Huh. Then we'll see these cut voice lines for the TV. That's a pretty good! Oh man! <laughs> Is that also meant to be Pepino? But I now think these so. are my favorite. The early enemy screams. Really? <laughs> Alrighty, let's get into the final <laughs> stuff. So in the final game. Peter Face only that? has two attacks, spawning enemies, and this slam move. Oh, but in this God. you can see it was originally intended for him to have a whole bunch of different attacks, including a mustache whip attack, a swear bubble attack, some sort of nose attack, and this pepperoni crying attack. Now as the fight progressed, parts of his face would detach, with Peppino needing to pick them up and toss them back in order to deal damage. His face would also become gradually more skeletal as more parts came off. And he does actually make a similar face to this when the fight first starts in the final game. And honestly, this early version of the fight seemed oh, quite I... good. But I guess it was decided to simply... Thousands of struggles doing this boss fight, now, actually. the pizza head fight was also quite different at first. Really? There's some very early footage of the fight in action. And as oh. you can see, the fight differed quite a bit in terms of attacks. With stuff like this spring head attack, this jousting charge, okay. this long kick, and this one where he threw a big pepino head. Which is probably a remnant of when the HUD still displayed the Pino's disembodied head in the top left. I see. Oh yeah, there are also these sprites where he straight up eats a rat hole. Pretty great. Uh, now before the final boss rush concept was decided on, there was an entirely different plan for phase three of the fight, shown in this concept video. What? Oh. What's going on here? Oh, my penis done. Damn. And here are some sprites of what it looked like in game. Oh, but best of all, that's so art, cool. It shows a completely nude Pepino at his absolute oh, breaking point. Amazing. You want to get nuts? Let's go nuts. <laughs> that's Alright, to wrap up, here's some footage of an early version of the final stage. The stage was about twice as long as it is in the final game, with double the time limit. And for the first five minutes of the stage, the fake Pepino boss fight music would play, with the second half playing the exit theme heard in the final game. And finally, there's this concept art that shows that Pizza Head himself would have originally joined you in the escape parade along with everyone else. Oh. And look, the B-Boss is here too. What? Thanks to everyone who let me use their footage for this video, and thanks again to Cactus Companion for all the help. That was interesting. A lot of unused stuff that was cut from Pizza Tower. 
Well, that was very interesting. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. Now, just... Now, you can just suggest me what should I react to next. Next. Yeah. What should I react... Now, what should I react to next? Leave a comment, and I... Leave a comment down below for your suggestion. So, yeah. Hope you enjoyed this reaction video. See you next time. Goodbye.